You're now watching Sports Better's Paradise on the Bet Rivers Network. All right, Jimmy Ottawa, Paul Stone, a red hot Paul Stone coming down the stretch strong again as he did last season. Four and one week. He's back from Austin, too, with that no sweat with Kansas State. You knew they were going to come back and force that overtime. What about the decision by climbing to go for it from the four four yard line? I know that added a little excitement and those added some questions as well. So well done, Paul. Let's get right to it this week. Let's go to the Pac-12. Colorado with a backdoor cover this past week against Oregon State. Now they'll uh, host the Arizona, the red hot Arizona Wildcats, catching ten and a half in Boulder. Yeah, Jimmy, I tell you, I often like to use the uh, phrase that I bet numbers, not teams. Uh, and that's certainly the case here. You know, you look at this Arizona team, first of all, and, you know, they're inarguably, in my opinion anyway, one of college football's biggest surprises. Uh, six and three on the season, just a couple of plays away from being eight and one. They've covered eight of their nine games uh, against the spread this season, including their last five covered those last five by an average of 20 points a game. Uh, Talk about outperforming the public's uh, expectations. Arizona has certainly done that. Colorado and Coach Prime, on the other hand, they have considerably cooled uh, since starting the season 3-0 and becoming not just a college football story and not even just a sports story, but a national news story. Uh, But, you know, they've kind of been brought back to earth in recent weeks. The Buffaloes have lost five of their last six. They really can't stop anyone on defense. Uh, Their quarterback, Sanders, has been bruised, uh, battered, and beaten. Uh, And quite frankly, I'll add this as well. I think Coach Prime's inexperience uh, as a college head head coach has been on full display at times this season uh, with some of the decision-making. But the, ne- the number in my mind in this game, again, it comes down to the number, and it's just gotten away from Arizona uh, in this spot. As recently as just a few weeks ago, I think myself and others who make power ratings, I know myself, I can speak for me individually, would have made this game pick just three weeks ago. And now we see Arizona laying 10 and a half. I actually made the line six and a half on Sunday before the lines were released. So I see some value here. And you noted last week's cover, important to note, Colorado, the last two weeks, they've scored a touchdown in the final three minutes in both those games to sneak in that back door. So the back door has been open uh, for the Buffaloes. Ten and a half just seems a little bit too rich here. I'll take Colorado plus ten and a half over a hot Arizona team. All right, get extra value this football season with Bet River Squares. Went up to $10,000 in bonus money. Bet $10 in same-game parlays on any game with the with the Squares icon to earn a square. Brought to you by our friends over at Bet Rivers. There's a couple of things that uh, you, you touched on, too. So, Can I impulsive? I mean, you know, you win the game in Fort Worth against CCU and you grandstand. It's one game. It has a lot of games to be played. He, he, a real get by everybody's account, I mean, contributed to how clean their execution was on offense. The head coach from Kent State, he fires him. In the middle of the season, yeah, a little overly impulsive from Prime uh, early on with some of the decisions. Let's move on to the American. Let's go to Houston and Cincinnati. Well, geez, I'm dating myself up all. The Big 12, get to it. <laughs> Houston and, and Cincinnati, now a Big 12 game. Going to be in Houston here. Houston in less than a field goal favorite, two at home against the Bearcats. Yeah, this is obviously a battle of uh, two of the Big 12's uh, four new members, uh, both of these teams formerly uh, residing in the American Athletic Conference. You look at these, kind of a side note, but you look at the four Big 12 newcomers uh, to the conference, uh, their first season this year competing in the Power Five, they have compiled a 5-19 and 19 straight up record in conference play two of those victories coming over one of the other newcomers in games, not among themselves. When you look at it from uh, uh, against the spread perspective, the four big 12 newcomers, five, 16 and one against the spread in conference games to this point. Uh, But I digress slightly Uh, Saturday's game in Houston. You know, it, uh, it does obviously pit two of the league's newcomers. Hard to believe that this Cincinnati team after winning their first two, They've lost seven in a row. They're winless in Big 12 play. 
just 22 months ago, they were playing Cincinnati, uh, playing Alabama, rather, just two wins away from a national championship in the four-team playoff. So things have changed quickly there in Cincinnati. And the reason they've changed, uh, much of the reason anyway, there are many reasons, but one of the primary reasons, turnovers. Turnovers always huge in college football, can be difficult to handicap. But you look at this Cincinnati team in their last seven games, again, all defeats, they have outgained four of their opponents. And they've not out only outgained four of those opponents, they've outgained those four op opponents, all losses by an average of 140 yards per game. In their eight games against FBS opponents this year, they have not won the turnover battle a single game. They have pushed three times, uh, but have failed to win the turnover battle. Difficult way to do business in college football. Their quarterback, Emory Jones, the transfer, very athletic, but also very erratic in the passing game. Uh, ten interceptions on the season. You look at this Houston game, they're four and five on the season. They desperately need this victory uh, to eventually gain bowl eligibility. The last time here in Houston, uh, they almost took Texas to overtime. Uh, if not for a uh, poor spot on fourth down, they probably would have taken the Longhorns to overtime in that game. I just think Houston's the better team, like their quarterback, Donovan Smith. Houston minus two over Cincinnati. All right, Houston minus two against Cincinnati. And one of those wins, even though it was dramatic, they fell behind in dramatic fashion uh, on that Thursday night against West Virginia and then won it you know, on the Hail Mary, but still uh, right there. West Virginia has shown to be a quality opponent. Uh, this year that's that's for sure and and, um, and the coach uh, trying to save save his job over there in Morgantown let's go to the SEC a wild one 39 36 in overtime with Arkansas and Florida down in the swamp uh, again more disorganization from Sunbelt Billy's team at the end of regulation trying to get the field goal unit they not it's like it the the whole shebang. Well, Auburn uh, comes in here. Not only is Auburn on Coach Sam Pittman's mind, but also former Auburn head coach Gus Malzahn on a lot of people in Arkansas's mind. He seems to be hovering in the shadows as they feel like they can. Uh, they've got he is attainable uh, if they make a move on Pittman. This line overnight, Paul went from two and a half to three at Bet Rivers. Arkansas at home minus three against Hugh Freeze and the Auburn Tigers. You know, I'll start by saying that a lot was made last week of Arkansas's firing of offensive coordinator Dan Enos uh, and the promotion of former Ohio State quarterback Kenny Guyton from wide receivers coach uh, to offensive coordinator. And that certainly was significant. I'm not downplaying that. But I don't think nearly enough attention was paid, especially from a handicapping perspective, to the return of running back Rocket Sanders. Uh, he came into the game before the Florida game. He had only played in three games all year, only had a total of 34 carries due to a, a knee injury. And this is a guy in the preseason, one publication and probably more, rated Sanders as the number two draft eligible running back uh, in the upcoming 2024 NFL draft. So that speaks to his talent when healthy. Uh, Sanders may not be his uh, pre-injury self, but against Florida, he did rush for 103 yards on 18 carries, helped jumpstart that Razorbacks offense, uh, which erupted, as you said, for 39 points in that 39-36 overtime victory over Florida, 481 yards total offense for the Razorbacks. In their previous four games leading up to the Florida game, Arkansas had failed to reach 290 yards total offense in any of those games. Average just 16.5 points per game, 227 and a half yards per game, and just 3.6 yards per play. So they were in dire need of some offensive uh, outbursts there. Guyton, he may be an improvement as the new offensive coordinator. Time will certainly tell. Uh, but an offense lacking offensive, uh, you know, lacking weapons for the most part uh, is certainly going to be tougher to defend with Rocket Sanders in the lineup. I like Arkansas to make it uh, two in a row here. Arkansas minus three over Auburn. Yeah, Rocket Sanders with a couple of catches also for a few yards. 20 total touches for 117 yards. Dual threat for K.J. Jefferson. He had 100 
uh, uh, with his uh, legs and uh, also had 255 with his arms. So, son of a gun's hard to bring down. Big old boy. And, yeah, like you said, almost 500 yards of offense in the swamp. Coming back home against the Auburn Tigers. All right, you got four picks for us. That's three size. We're looking at a total now. Going out to the Pac-12. In Berkeley, Cal 1 and 58 and a half against Washington State. First of all, Jimmy, I got a question. Have you ever watched a game from that tree in Berkeley? No, I have not. No, I've <laughs> okay. been to a lot of college campuses in different places, but never been in a tree. No, uh-uh. I'd, I'd be at my age. I'd probably, it'd probably be a bad decision for me to get in any tree. But uh, uh, just, uh, just a side note there. First of all, you know, I believe we get a point or two of value uh, here on the over based on both of these teams having offensive performances last week that were uh, lackluster, you know, to put it mildly. You look at Cal, first of all, they scored 19 points, but it was against Oregon, one of the better teams in the nation, I believe the best team in the nation. But the Golden Bears only had 286 total yards offense against Oregon, so not much of an output. And then meanwhile, Washington State, even more pedestrian, scored only seven points, recorded just 245 yards total offense in a 10-7 to home loss to second division uh, Pac-12 team Stanford. That game was played in uh, less than optimal uh, conditions there on the Palouse. But I believe those performances, offensive performances, an anomaly, that's not who these teams have been for most of 2023. And mostly what both of these teams have been is defensively challenged. Neither of these teams very strong defensively. Both of the teams actually rank in the 100s in total defense in the FBS. In total defense, again, Washington State checking in 108th in total defense, 427 yards per game allowed. Cal four spots back at 112th, 431 and a half yards allowed a game. You look at Washington State, they throw the ball 63% of the time. So they rank third nationally uh, in that statistical category. That equates, in their case, to over 41 pass attempts a game. Cal's not good on defense, period, but they're especially vulnerable against the pass. They rank 127th nationally, almost give up nine yards per pass attempt, 8.9 yards per attempt. So they don't defend the pass very well. Washington State throws it a lot. These teams are going to have a lot of plays. A formula I use projects 151 plays, which is quite a few snaps in college football. I had this game projected to be in the low 60s. I think we're getting a little bit of a bargain here. Take over 58 and a half. Washington State Cal there in Berkeley on Saturday. Been to Cal's campus, been to Stanford's campus, and a bunch of them in in, uh, in, in my favorite Pepperdine uh, in uh, California, but never, no, 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 stay out the tree. <laughs> but that is a sacred tree over on Berkeley's campus. All right, uh, over 58 and a half, Cal and Washington State uh, in the Pac-12. Four, four and one last week, a sizzling week uh, for Paul Stone. He's heating up, coming down the stretch just as he did at the uh, last season as well right here on our podcast. For Paul Stone, I'm Jimmy Yacht on the Sports Betters Paradise on the Bet Rivers Network.